So the last thing we need to do now is to prove that these functions are orthogonal to each other. So what that means is that if I have this integral over here, and then I have the conjugate multiplied by the function corresponding to the end stationary state, then this is going to be equal to the delta function. So what this means is that this is going to be equal to 1 if m is equal to n, and it's going to be equal to 0 if m is not equal to n. So that means these are orthogonal to each other. So how do we prove this? So in order to prove this, we need to use some of the results we derived in the earlier videos. Namely, we need to use these two results over here. So we've proved these in our last two videos, so you can check up on that if you've forgotten how to prove these. So the way to arrive at this result over here is that we're going to start off with this expression. So we have the function corresponding to the m state and restate, and then a plus a minus applied to xi n dx. So the first thing we're going to do is to immediately invoke this first result over here. So a plus a minus applied to xi n, this is going to be equal to n times xi n dx. And so therefore, this is equal to n times this integral over here. And you see that incidentally, this is exactly the expression we're trying to evaluate. I was claiming that this expression here is going to be equal to this delta function over here, which means uh, this kind of uh, structure over here that's equal to 1 if m is equal to n, it's equal to 0 if m is not equal to n. So this is exactly what we're trying to find. So starting with this expression here, we arrived at this expression over here. So now we need to come up with an alternative way to rewrite this expression and to try to equate it with what we arrived over here to try to deduce that this integral here is indeed equal to this delta function. So another way to rewrite this integral over here is to use the second uh, property that we've proved. So we're going to start off with the same function at the same integral. So we have the conjugate a plus a minus xi n dx. So now we're going to use this second property over here. So in this case, I'm going to treat uh, a minus n as rg, and then xi m will be our f. So I think you can see the parallel, uh, parallel case over here. So you have your f, your conjugate, which is equal to xi m, and your a minus applied to xi n will be your g, and then we have this a plus operator over here. So according to this formula, I can rewrite the left-hand side as a right-hand side, right? So let's do just that. So that means I can take, so if this is plus, then this would be minus, right? So in our case, we have a plus, so it becomes a minus. So we have a minus applied to our function f. In this case, f is xi m. And then we take the entire conjugate. And then we multiply this by g. So multiply by g. And in our case, g is a minus xi n dx. And then we're going to repeat the process. This time we're going to take xi n as our g, and then a minus xi m as our f. So we do the exact same thing again. So once again, uh, this, this time the operator is a minus. So when this is minus, this should be a plus. So changing from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, we have a plus applied to f. So we have a plus applied to f. In this case, f is a minus xi m conjugate, and then multiplied by g. So multiplied by g. In this case, g is xi m. And I think you see where we're going with this. So this expression over here is exactly this expression again. So in this case, this a plus a minus over here becomes m times xi m. So in the end, this becomes m times negative infinity to infinity xi m conjugate times xi n dx. So this is another important result that we've derived. And then recall that uh, initially we've actually derived this result over here. So that means this integral over here is equal to this integral over here. So what this means is that, let's open a new page. So the first integral that we arrived, this one over here, this is equal to n times negative infinity to infinity, conjugate of n times xi n. So this left integral is equal to this integral over here, m times 
the same integral. And if you move everything to the left hand side, n minus m multiplied by this integral over here, you see that this is equal to 0. So you see that there are two possibilities. If n is not equal to m, so obviously this expression is not equal to 0. So in order for this whole thing to be equal to 0, it must be the case that the integral itself is equal to 0. And recall that this is exactly what we wanted to find. We wanted to prove that if m is not equal to n, these are orthogonal to each other. So this is equal to 0. And then if n is equal to m, obviously this expression is going to be equal to 0. So this uh, equality has to be satisfied. And incidentally, this integral over here, if m is equal to n, by definition, you just get this integral, which is, of course, equal to 1. So as you can see, we've essentially proved this claim over here. If n is equal to m, then you get e this integral is equal to 1. If n is not equal to m, then the answer is equal to 0.